Symphony, uh, measure 75 through 87. Um, and uh, this is um, a fairly standard excerpt that bass players are asked to play um, at auditions. Um, and it's a great teller um, for audition committees um, for a bass player's sense of rhythm um, and not just their rhythm between note to note to note, subdivisions and such, but a longer pulse and maintaining a line um, throughout things like string crossings and intervals. Intonation is also a big tell in this, uh, in this excerpt, um, and um, as well as tone quality and the types of strokes that you're asked to demonstrate. Um, starting right off the bat, um, we see in the first measure we see quarter notes um, right here, uh, pick up two quarter notes. And the, um, the in Brahms, um, uh, in the Boston Symphony, when we see, um, for instance, in this case, quarter notes that have no type of articulation, no dots or anything on them, um, we like to play them with a fullness and a connectedness, a legato, um, with some heft. And not exactly, actually no separation, but some sort of enunciation and demarcation. Um, certainly not this. sort of a declamatory nature. Um, then moving on to the next measure, we have what um, had been previously echoed at the very beginning of the movement by, um, by the horn, um, this uh, melodic motive. Right, so this um, is an opportunity for the bass player to demonstrate their um, singing, their real, real smooth legato, and good open vibrato, good intonation. So, so you notice there's no hitches or or or, or kind of crunches or breaks. We go right from one B natural into the next. The, the bow arm goes to the right, and then it goes to the left. And the vibrato remains constant throughout, with this constant um, singing throughout. And you notice what happens with the left hand. We have a... There's a rhythm, bum 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 bum, um, a very clear subdivision, bum bum bum. But notice that there is zero um, um, corruption of the legato um, in the bow arm by that left hand rhythm. Um, so essentially, the bow is is just doing this, just three even notes, and the left hand is the only thing that's producing. Um, the rhythm, 
Disruptions in the melody in the legato by the bow arm don't fall into that trap. Um, in the next measure, then, this is where um, uh, things get very different. We have all of a sudden this pattern. Oh, excuse me. Right. So. It's very tempting to want to play those notes shorter and almost pecky. Um, and in the Boston Symphony, we are known for playing things on the shorter side. But in this case, the quote unquote shortness um, doesn't refer to the middle and the end of the note. Right? It, we're, we're not taking away, we're not doing that, but we're doing. We're still having some resonance after that pitch, but. We're giving nice little. Um, That's a great way to practice this stroke, is just on one note. Right? Um, I should say at this point, um, I sincerely apologize to those of you out there who have perfect pitch. I am playing this entire excerpt. Um, an oct or, um, a whole step higher than it's written and how it should sound. Um, that's because I am stuck at home with my uh, at-home bass, which I have strung up with uh, solo strings. So instead of D, G, A, E, we have A, E, B natural, F sharp. Um, so I sincerely apologize for all of you out there with perfect pitch. Um, I am uh, blessed to not have that particular affliction. Um, so, um, when we get, um, further on in the excerpt, we encounter, um, uh, this type of pattern, um, the bomb, 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 and it's very important that when we're playing Germanic music, especially Brahms, um, there's often this figure of um, uh, a, 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 an eighth note that follows, or you know, a short note that follows a long note. In this case, it's a thirty-second that follows a sixteenth, you know, dotted sixteenth. Um, so that pattern, bam, ba bam, ba bam, it's so easy to want to do be sort of lazy and not rigorous with that rhythm. But this Germanic music um, demands that we treat each, um, each note with equal power. Um, uh, that we don't go... So this is really about the bow. Um, try this pattern um, uh, with scales. Something like that. Instead of... What you need to do is make sure that you're catching the separate note at the end of the down bow, right? Okay, that's one way you can do this. Another bowing would be to do this. But there's a lot more opportunity when you're retaking to have a big old gap after that long note, which we don't want. Bam, 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 bam. Real sus 
Tenuto in sort of um, depth. Um, so notice, um, if you jump ahead, um, I'm looking at my part right now, one, two bars after letter E, um, that pattern um, of bum, bum, bum changes. We have, starting on the F sharps, rest. We have a 30 second, excuse me, a uh, uh, 64th rest, I believe it is. Rest, 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 rest. So it's important that we don't go. Right? The F sharp is still a longer note. It's still a 32nd, not a 64th. If it were written as a 64th, it would be. Instead, it's. use too much bow. If you do, you can't get back to the frog in order to um, consistently articulate um, the low note. Um, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that can happen. Um, so um, when we get then to the repeated B naturals in measure 84, these notes do have dots on them. They do have dots. But those dots, the way I interpret it, uh, I interpret them, and we interpret them in the Boston Symphony, is not is not bounced. Um, it's simply not in the style. However, the dot indicates a shortening of the note by one half value. So instead of if there were no uh, dots. The note still has um, uh, an ending uh, taper, but there's much more front loading of energy on those notes. Basically, um, oh hey sweetie, that's basically uh, Brahms uh, four in a nutshell, and Emma and I are gonna say bye. Bye bye. Want to push the red button?